Hey everyone, this is Dave Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now I've got a video today for you on the 67.5 service on a Cummins. Now you say 67.5, what is that? What it is, it's the 67,500 mile interval. Once you reach that, you're going to get a message on the cluster or the overhead that says you need to perform service. Now perform service doesn't mean oil change. That means you've got some work to do under the hood. And it's mainly emissions related. Now it will depend on what vehicle you've got. If you've got a chassis cab or what they considered a Ram truck, yes, you think Ram truck is all of the above. No, it's not. Ram truck has to have a factory bed on it. Cabin chassis is a whole different category. So you need to check per year per vehicle because depending on which one you've got, you're going to do a combination of one of three things. One, you're going to replace the crankcase and all of the above no matter what. Two, you may be cleaning the EGR valve. And three, you may be cleaning the EGR cooler. So make sure you check on which one you need for your vehicle before you start doing unnecessary work. So check your owner's manual or call the dealer and have them check it by the vent. So let me go ahead and get started on this. Alright, so you're not going to be able to get the EGR valve off or the crankcase filter assembly or the EGR cooler unless you get the plastic engine shroud off. Now, to get it off, it's fairly cut and dry. You've got your dipstick you've got to pull out. Once you pull it out, you got a total of four 8mm bolts here, 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 and here. Once we get those off, we'll be able to get it out of the way. And then we'll have access to if you're going to be doing the EGR cleaning, if you're going to be replacing the crankcase filter, or the EGR cooler. Whichever one of the three combinations you're going to be doing, we'll be able to have access now. All right, so there you go, last bolt, and we got the dipstick out of the way, so we hadn't set the cover off to the side. Now we got access to everything that's on top of the engine without anything being on our way. So, you're free to do any kind of work you need to on the EGR cooler, which we're going to. You can replace the crankcase filter easily now, and you can also take your EGR valve off if you need to. All right, so the EGR cooler is located back here on the passenger side of the engine now. It's located further back. It's part of the manifold assembly. Uh, you've got a section back here. You've got to get to the back bolt, and it comes up to here right where this control valve is. So you do have a few things you need to get out of the way. Now, one thing to help you get to a few things, I do recommend taking the rubber boot off from the air filter down to the turbo. Just gives me a little more room. I'd probably go ahead and tell you to go ahead and recommend disconnecting both negative cables on the batteries because you will be working in this location. You don't want to arc up against the positive battery cable. So. Go ahead and disconnect your batteries, take the air inlet off. Once we get the air inlet off, we'll start working on proceeding with the EGR cooler. So the lid of air cleaner assembly is held on with two latches. Let's go ahead and grab them, release them. You want to pick up and you want to slide it off the little portion back here towards the engine that has the fingers that go into the little slot to keep it in place. Now we do got two connectors up here that we need to go ahead and disconnect. We'll go ahead and squeeze in on the connector on the first one. It only has one lock. The secondary one back here has a two-stage lock. It's got a red piece you need to squeeze in on, and you need to pull it off. In order to release that connector, it's either, usually you can probably use your finger to do it. If it's been on there a while, and got any kind of dust and dirt, you may need a screwdriver. Push it up on the red lock. Once it's all the way flush to the bottom and it's protruding to the top, then you squeeze on the secondary lock. Squeeze on it, slide it out of the way. Now the harness is still attached to the air filter assembly by a little plastic Christmas tree fastener here. We'll pull that off and get it out of the way. Here's a rubber hose that we just took loose from the air inlet going up to the uh, crankcase filter. You got that out of the way. Now here's your oversized band clamp right here that has, it, it actually secures the uh, air inlet to the turbo. You're gonna back off the screw there and once you get that loose, we'll be able to wiggle this assembly off. I usually just go ahead and grab up here at the filter. And I put my hand a little further down where it gets close to that turbo and I just start wiggling. Once I get it up, then it should lift up and I can get it and sit it out of the way. So there you go, you got it loose, just put it on the ground next to where you're working. All right, so let me give you a little breakdown on how it mounts. Now, we do have a clamp up here. It's a V-band type clamp that mounts to the front of that EGR cooler. And you got a total of four bolts that go through the midsection going down to the bracket on the exhaust manifold. And then at the rear, you've got two nuts. There's uh, studs that come up off the manifold, and you got two nuts you've got to take loose on the back. The back are going to be 15 millimeters, 
and then the four up here are going to be 10 millimeters and that band clamp is going to be an 11 millimeter now keep in mind we still got a few things mounted to the outside of here we got some coolant hoses we got one at the rear here we got one at the front here and then we also got this egr control valve assembly that we're going to have to take loose that's probably going to be our next step right here now it's got that two-stage lock like i told you about earlier on the air inlet and we got to lift up on on the primary lock squeeze it on the secondary move it to the side now we're not going to take the cables loose we're going to leave all that there now we got two 10 millimeters on the side here and we got two 10 millimeters on the back so in between the valve cover we need to get off to get this assembly off and another thing that's going to be partially in your way is this coolant pipe there's actually a bolt right here we'll be taking off as well and i'll show you that in just a second all right so i'm going to spray some wd-40 up in here where that hose that pipe goes on the uh cooler get up in there get it soaked down good so when it gets loosened up it'll be good to go I went ahead and took the 10 millimeter off the bracket for the hose and I also took the two 10 millimeters off on this side that go to that EGR control valve bracket. So once I've got the lube in there I can start wiggling a little bit and get it loose and pull it all the way back till it finally comes off. Now that gives you enough clearance to do what you need. If you need to move it out of the way you can. It does have a braided flexible line on it so it helps you. Like I said now all we got to do is move over to the back side to get to the two 10 millimeters on this side. All right, so for reference purposes, here's your valve cover, the proportion assembly, and here's the side. This is the electrical portion of that EGR control valve, that flow valve. Now you got the two tins here and here. That's the last two I need to take loose to get this bracket and this assembly positioned out of the way. So go ahead and knock them out real fast. All the bolts are off. Now we go ahead and move this assembly. I got the electrical connector off. Now what we're going to do is, like I said, don't worry about this cable assembly. That's going to stay. Now, you'll notice from time to time there's a spring that goes from this bracket to where this cable mounts right here. Now, you'll see that spring broke from time to time. It's nothing to worry about. That's just something that's installed there at the factory when they're putting the engine together. They even tell us to Chrysler, do not be worried about it. Don't worry about replacing anything. If it's broke, it's not a problem. And what I need to do is I need to lift up and get it up out of the way because I still got to clear where it goes around the neck of that where that coolant mounted. And you're going to have to squeeze a little bit because you got that spring to overcome in these cables. And then what I do is I just set it to the side because now it's it's no longer in my way because everything from here back is the EGR cooler. So now I can work on getting this crankcase hose out of the way and then I can work on getting this coolant hose off because there's a nipple that goes into the head straight down. I need to get these off. That way I got a little more clearance to get into the bolts because like I said, there's four bolts that hold down the cooler in the midsection right here. 